Mm, good evening and welcome to Omni Bros Live. I am one of your co-hosts, Omni Dog from Omni Dog's Vault on YouTube. With me tonight, a week in geekdom's Geo. Geo, how's it going, buddy? Doing pretty well. It's pretty humid, but uh, this will make me feel better. So I'm very happy to be here with everybody and with you guys uh, to talk some comics. Yeah, it's humid as heck here too in Virginia. Oh man. We have the omnibus collector himself, Riley Mo. How's it going, big guy? What are you up to? I had Taco Bell and I'm ready to pass out. <laughs> ah, what'd you have at Taco Bell? Sorry, my dogs are making a lot of pointless noise. Um the it's it's no trip Taco Bell without the nacho fries. So nice. And the nacho fries box comes with a Doritos Loco Taco because you know Why something not? invented by a stoner is got to be good. <laughs> um, and uh, <clears throat> and I think it was like the beefy cheesy burrito or something that it also comes with. And then of course the uh, Baja Blast Mountain Dew because when you're gonna go, you got to go all the way. You can only get that at Taco Bell, right? Yeah, I discovered that the hard way. Uh, what, you went into 7-Eleven and tried to find it? I went to like three or four stores looking for it just for the sake of making a pun because uh, I was going to get it. My One of my old manager's last name was uh, Tabaja, so I called it the Tabaja Blast, and I was going to get one and make a, uh, a dew bomb out of that and oh then Monster and have that at work and uh i couldn't find it so the next morning and i i spent like my entire lunch searching for it <laughs> when i until i got smart and looked online it says on wikipedia that since x year it's only been available at taco bell restaurants so the next morning i got up super early so that i could hit taco bell before i got to the office and of course there's not one that was in a good range but uh I went over and grabbed one, brought it in. I got a big one with no ice. So I was like, here, we have plenty for the rest of the day. We'll make some Tabaja Blasts. It's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I remember the Dew Bomb episode almost sent me to the hospital with heart palpitations. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Just saw God that day. I did. He saw Grant Morrison in the flesh. <laughs> Oh, I remember that. Yeah, no, I, I, my heart was flipping out after all those dew bombs. That was like two and a half years ago, and I still remember it. Mm -hmm. It was the cause of all of his future health problems. <laughs> mm, I don't know about that, but it sure created problems for past Jess. I don't know if it created problems for future Jess. Days of future Jess. <laughs> Uh, but a place that doesn't give you any problems. It may give you heart palpitations with its heart-stopping discounts, though, in StockTrades.com, where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. I bet we're going to get an Omni Bros code coming up here pretty darn quickly because it's coming up against the end of the quarter now. So be paying attention because if you put in an order of $50 or more in the United States, you get free shipping, fabulous customer service, fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. Right. Oh, man. You got to work in a, but wait, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. I will when we get the, uh, the code to give out. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, uh, Felix is mentioning the IST unboxing, which I did not get to see yet. How many – did you see it, Gio? Oh, I did, but I forgot. I think it was like 37 omnibus. How many uh, – do you know how many boxes he actually got? Uh, it was like five or six of the huge ones. Oh, the giant boxes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it was like 37 omnis. And like five absolutes or something like that. Wow. That's a lot. That's a lot of books. <laughs> but we got a sweet shout out. So, yeah. Uh, oh, thanks, we buddy. did? Yeah, yeah, for sure. We were a, a huge, 
uh, deciding factor, I think. Oh, wow. What was? Yeah. Do you know the guy's name? Did he mention it? Uh, we have a I, link to him on uh, um, on Instagram. Exactly. Oh, we do. Yeah, yeah. On our uh, Instagram, was it Geo? Is it you or is it Gabe who's been doing all the updates on there? Uh, both of us, but lately it's been Gabe. Yeah, Gabe's getting really on the the social media game, um, which is awesome because someone's got to do it. Um, but yeah, I was flipping through earlier and I saw that, and it it does have a, a link on there to his either his instagram or his channel or something because i think he has a uh obviously he has a channel on youtube because he put that up but yeah mm -hmm. that's definitely mm -hmm. bigger than any order i've gotten shout out back to him if we can figure out his name if he gave us a shout out i'm looking on my uh instant yeah. instantgram <clears throat> Hold, hold the uh, Ed Brubaker talk. Let's find out uh, yeah. the, the name. <laughs> Ed Brubaker, I thought we were talking about Kelly Sue DeConnick today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, only Luis was here. Well, I thought that was the point. I thought we were doing it on a day that Luis was not going to be on so we could talk about KSD. <laughs> and how much all of us actually think that she's the greatest. Well, I would like to read her Aquaman. It's supposed to be good. I've I've Same been here. telling y'all. I'm telling y'all, it's pretty good. I want to read it. Of course, I have like... no. It's time for nostalgia. That's the YouTube channel. Time for nostalgia. Oh, yeah, Mr. Nostalgia. Saturn V just said so. Time for nostalgia. Thanks for the shout out. We're shouting you back out. Over two hundred pounds. Two hundred pounds. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six boxes. Six of the huge ass boxes. That's a lot, man. But that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> Six big ones and then one large one. Like he has seven things in front of him. It's like the, the boxes that when you when you order an absolute or something, like the stupid big books, those books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Holly, get in here. The omnibus show starting. Oh my God! Oh, Jesus Jesus Christ. Mr. J, you no fun. Shut up, Holly. <laughs> Shazam! <laughs> I got really confused. I'm gonna be completely honest yeah. with you, dude. Yeah. I'm. Uh, you're mentally unstable. I'm not mentally unstable. I had my camera away, and I heard you scream, and I literally jumped for a second. Like, what is happening? <laughs> These are the kind of colorful voicemails I leave Jess on the reg. Oh, they, <laughs> they are so disturbing, man. They sound just like him. I just like the Joker. I'm like, whoa, this is so crazy. It turns what out missed. that he's actually... Uh... Actually, Mark Hamill. Oh, they sound so much like Mark Hamill That's when he true. leaves them on the phone. So we were you. You missed us discussing a, a gentleman. It's it's time for nostalgia on YouTube, who had the biggest unboxing with like two hundred pounds of books from IST, um, and he gave us a shout out. Ooh, nice uh, on the channel here, and we mentioned that we're going to be talking about Kelly Sue DeConnick, um, but actually not Kelly Sue DeConnick apparently. <laughs> We can talk about her. That's fine with me. I'd like to know more about her Aquaman run. You, you, you it, are saying it's the bee's knees. It's it's okay. It's okay. I'll I'll talk about it once there's a little bit more out. Like I, I've been enjoying it, but there's I think it's only been one story arc or less than one story arc. Oh, so okay. it's maybe a little bit more into it. I'll be able to come out and be like, yes, this is definitely, definitely great. Awesome. I finally saw the Aquaman movie. Yay. Yeah. It was good. I liked it. A few yeah. cheesy cheesy moments, a few uh, real like pre-2010 movie throwback moments, but I still liked it at all. <coughs> Very cool. Black Manta was incredible looking. Yay. That fills me with joy that you were. Good. <laughs> good. I, I would never come on here and besmirch Aquaman in front of Geo. Never. 
<laughs> you love that word besmirch. I'm telling you. I do. Yeah, like, I like twice today you've used it. I do. Yeah, That's just a word. Besmirched uh, Ryan North. <laughs> I'm so yeah. mad about that. I am so. I'm going to tweet Ryan North right now. We're going to take this Omni Dog threat seriously. We're going to have to have a real discussion. <laughs> the unreadable squirrel girl. Un oh my gosh! Unbelievable. <laughs> right now. Why would you say that in public? Everyone heard it. <laughs> now it's going to be a thing. What have you done? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, oh my gosh. I know. I'm so sorry that it's ending with issue 50. Yeah, you sound like you're really sorry about <laughs> I'm broken up about it, man. I hope you can make it through. If you need somebody to talk to, I'm here for you. <laughs> Holy smokables. Can can y'all hear my dogs back here? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Millie. Well, Millie can't even hear me, so I can't. So, Chewy, you got to <laughs> translate this to her. You got to relay, <laughs> relay the message. She got the zoomies, and I'm in this tiny apartment, and she's just going around in circles. <laughs> There's nowhere to go. So she's <laughs> slamming into walls and couches and stuff. Oh, yeah, I could see that a little bit. All right. Well, anyway, so I'm, we're supposedly here to talk about Ed Brubaker. Right on, man. Ed yep. Brubaker, uh, my number one comic book writer. Number two is uh, Greg Rucka. So Ooh. we'll save him for another day. Interesting. Uh, now, I did tease that there could be a possibility of consumption of blue Dr. Pep. Is that uh, a thing? Okay. Wait, what? Wow. Wait a minute. I Let got me it. I, this is the first one. I've, I've never tried it. Blue oh. Dr. Pepper with the Mysterio Ooh. can. Mysterio's the on the can? The hero Mysterio. Sorry. The hero Mysterio himself. Wait. So is this – did they put out a new flavor for Spider-Man? Yes. Isn't that insane? Like what? just for the movie. It's, it's Dark Berry. Dark Are you going to be pouring it in a glass so we I'm can see? To try. Absolutely. This All is right. uh, dark you're, berry. It's you're naturally, highlighted. naturally and artificially flavored. I'm going to focus on the naturally here. That's what right. <laughs> <laughs> in this In this one can, there's 160 calories. There's zero total fat. Cool. And there's 1,000 grams of pure unicorn power. <laughs> so we're going to see. <laughs> And now, for those at home, a little ASMR. Are you ready? Here we go. <laughs> All right. We do everything in this channel. Prepare your microphone. I mean, your headset. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that's crispy. Oh, it's all the way open now. Yeah, that's how we like it. Okay. Now. This sounds like the setup to an axe murder, the way you're doing it. For the coup de grace. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, first initial impression. A little disappointed. That it's, kind of blue. <laughs> it's not blue at all. I, mean, I, really, blue. I really expected it to be blue. I mean, I guess the can. It never. My drink is bluer blue. than that. It really is. I'm extremely confused right now, but that's okay. I'm going to try not to let that affect my review of the flavor as we uh as we let the. The suds, the suds go. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, it's got that berry smell. I like it. Yeah, it's kind of like a berry Dr. Pepper. I mean, it's exactly what you would think it would be like. <laughs> a berry Dr. Pepper. You ought to be like mm, full-bodied <laughs> aroma of yes. berry. Mm -hmm. Aroma of much berry, yes. <laughs> From the northern pines in California, I can tell. These were I give it imported. 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Pretty good. Uh, not the best Dr. Pepper flavor, but you know what? I'm going to consume the heck out of it while it's in stores. So where's, like, I, I would assume regular Dr. Pepper is at the top? Absolutely. And then where's, like, cherry Dr. Pepper? 
Cherry Dr. Pepper's at like a good solid 9.6. Like Cherry okay. Dr. Pepper's legit. Dr. Pepper tends kind of on down because you're starting to get healthy and that defeats the purpose of Dr. Pepper. Yeah, exactly. So, but it still has some calories, 10. So that's down to like maybe like an 8 out of 10. And then diet is like not even worth mentioning. So whatever. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Glad we got that out of the way. Pretty good. No, real berry taste. I'm like super it. disappointed at the color. I think we all are a little let down, Jess. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to put my bull's hat on and then I'll be ready. Okay. Ed Brubaker. Okay. <laughs> so. Our boy has written a lot of books. Are we, so how, how do we want to, are, are you, is everyone just going to go and list their own stuff and talk about their own stuff? Do we want to take turns? What, how are we, how do you want to do this, Jess? Um, well, I've got a huge stack of all my Ed Brubaker stuff. And so I can, since I know most of your stuff is packed away, Riley, and Tyler never has anything to show. What? How dare you? <laughs> oh, in my face. Oh, I came prepared. <laughs> um, I just have a whole huge stack of stuff, and we can just talk about it as uh, however you guys want. Um, uh, it's fine with me. Um, uh, we can talk about his most recent stuff. Um, we can talk about, um, his most famous stuff, you know, however you want to go about it is, is I'm easy. Well, just let me, let me ask you then real quick. I know that you're currently reading war of Kings and I am just, uh, yeah, I am. Ed Brubaker is of course responsible for some of the X-Men stuff that's, in those omnis i just got done reading it all so um i think realm or not realm uh road to war of kings i believe that might have been the one that had the deadly genesis miniseries i think so and that's where i believe it what was happens vulcan, in that? vulcan is introduced oh yeah that's it, it's uh... kind of like a like a a retcon of uh, was it the events of like um, uh, what's it called? Giant size X Men? Yeah, giant, giant size, size X Men. Yeah. Where yeah, all of a sudden we find out this uh, mysterious team was sent in after the uh, other team was sent in, and this new team never got heard from again. And now Vulcan shows up with with. Um, uh, the warpy guy that pops out of him. What's his name? Uh, Genesis. Uh, 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 adapter guy. Uh, Darwin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he pops out of him. Uh, that was really a, a weird book in that uh, prelude to uh, Road to War of Kings or whatever it was called. I When I read that, I hadn't read that before um, until I was kind of doing back when I was trying to do that readathon for the X-Men and I read Inferno and then I basically skipped all the way to like Brubaker. Uh, I don't know why, but I was like, I feel like reading over here. And so I started there and I read uh, Deadly Genesis and I was actually really pleased. And I feel like I read that at a good point too, since I had just read a bunch of Claremont. And so I was going towards something that was hearkening back towards that era. And it, it's always kind of fun to see stories like that where they're trying to um, revisit something that another writer did and kind of revisit the voice of those characters at that time. And I thought it was a really interesting idea to take the, the, the story from giant size. Cause it's just one small chunk. It's one, one shot story. And then, um, and change it to, you know, something like, Oh, this, this thing happened in behind the scenes. This thing happened between. Yeah pages that that we didn't know about and it it he did it in a way that i felt like actually made sense um as uh narratively it it, it didn't seem too shoehorned in there it didn't seem too far-fetched that that kind of thing could could have happened oh gosh i feel like they, they took a jackhammer and a chisel and and um 
jackhammered the hell out of it in in with a shoehorn and pounded it right into there <laughs> well um, it's okay to be wrong <laughs> <laughs> as i say to you yes that is true but i will say that uh i just got done with all the x-men issues in war of kings and found them highly enjoyable i am off to a really good start in that war of kings book uh, and that was uh his whole like 12 fart 12 fart 12 part <laughs> rise oh, and fall of uh the shiar empire is is what you're saying right yeah exactly and i um have very little experience with x-men so i um always uh appreciate a, a good X-Men story that leaves me as uh, um, not as, as lost as lost as little as possible because I didn't have a problem following that. I guess maybe I have more of a, a background in X-Men than I give myself credit for because I, I understood everything that was going on in, in that um, enough that I could follow it. And I found it to be uh really well done and i really enjoyed the heck out of all of it and i don't know is this the first case of professor x's guilt like eating him alive um or are there previous examples of him doing some kind of manipulative thing and lying and having to feel his guilt eat away at him. I don't think it's the first time, but I, again, like I have not read anything from the nineties. So this would, that would be a really good question for uh, Gabe or Omar. Okay. To follow up on. Cause I know that they not only have they read all that stuff, but they remember it fondly. Um, and we'll talk about it a lot and argue about it a lot. <laughs> uh, like, I think, what is it? Trial of Gambit that Gabe loves, but Omar hates. Right. <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that would be a question for them. Okay. But it, I, I think that it is uh, a interesting. That's always an interesting thing, thing with, with professor X, especially because most of the time you're going to be used to him as that, protagonist type person and then when they throw it's the same for any type of character like when you throw that thing in there that makes them imperfect i guess mm -hmm. um it, it can lead it can lead it doesn't always lead but it can lead to really interesting concepts and storylines yeah so i i'm finding um that uh brubaker wrote uh, a, a good x-men i i found it i I'm not that happy with um, the Vulcan retcon, but I but I feel like he did. Um, uh, after that happened, I feel like the rest of the story got very interesting, and I I think that it's um, it was really well done, and I I think that book is off to a really good start. No, I, I haven't read his other, because I think after that was, or maybe I have read part of it and I just don't remember, but there's a, like a couple more arcs and then he works with Matt Fraction uh, on the series for one arc before Fraction takes over. And speaking of Matt Fraction oh. and Ed Brubaker working together, they also work together on uh, the Immortal Iron Fist book. So All right, good. let me go get that. So good. Now That's this really one kind of worked uh if, if you look at it from now it it kind of works as a precursor stylistically to fractions uh hawkeye mm -hmm. absolutely uh, it, it has a very not not that because fractions hawkeye was was more lighthearted and stuff but as far as style goes and i know a lot of that has to do with the art mm. in there yeah. um mm. it it is a book that if you i think if you enjoy one you probably would enjoy the other yeah the art and storytelling are very similar even though this like the brevity is different and the um the attitudes in general are different now did they alternate issues or combine writing styles or what did they do in this book i think they they just uh i feel like fraction wrote it with guidance from brubaker and it, please, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like I, I 
read that that's how it was. Mm, okay. Because this is one of the books that got me super deep into Marvel when I was first uh, getting out of the DC universe and Third Eye Comics was recommending books to me to read. And I just loved this book immediately. And yeah, that was that was my favorite book of like the last decade for the most yeah, part. I can I, see why. Up until about 2018, that was my favorite story. And it was the most disappointing thing to watch the live action Netflix series because all I wanted them to do was adapt the book. Just like right. Up. I and, think you and I talked about that on the out of print book show that we did that you and I agreed that all they had to do was adapt that book and the hit show would have been a hit. So good. Absolutely. So good. And they kind of like hinted at going that direction at the end of season two, but then the show got canceled as all, I mean, all the Marvel Netflix shows got canceled, but I would have really enjoyed seeing where they went with it because that run is just iconic. Like absolutely from beginning to end, it took a character. I don't know about you guys, but before you guys read that book, did you guys care at all about Iron Fist? Mm, no, not really. I don't I mean, know that I, I care about him now either. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I had read about him when I was reading um, uh, Ultimate Spider-Man, and I wanted to learn more about him, so I picked up uh, the, you know, the run that we're talking about now, and it it's a lot better, and it made me care for the character. But I can't say that I've read a whole ton of Iron Fist material. Yeah, I mean, it. I think that's the mark of a truly great writer is when they can take a character in a direction that a lot of people have not found super interesting, like Hawkeye. I mean, we could talk about that for days, but mm -hmm. that can make them really compelling and interesting and write stories that make you love the character. Because it took me from, like, on a scale of 1 to 10 about how much I cared about the character of Iron Fist, it took me from, like, a 2 to a 10 at the end of that run. Um, but then the Iron Fist that I read beyond that, because I was like, oh, this is amazing, was was somewhat of a letdown in comparison. Uh, the, the series was written jointly, <clears throat> sorry, for 14 issues. And then <clears throat> Fraction wrote issues uh, 15 and 16 by himself. There you go. Um, yeah, and I... I pulled everything I can of Brubaker, but I have such a display of Daredevil in front of my Daredevil books that I'm not pulling the Brubaker Daredevil books. I'm going to let somebody else do that. I've got, I've got, a, I've got Electra atop a castle. I'll go grab them. Okay. Electra's atop a castle, and Daredevil's hanging out on a cross in a cemetery, and. Then there's yellow daredevil. I mean, it's a whole thing. <laughs> his, uh, yeah, his daredevil was great too. Um, came coming off the heels of Brubaker, or not sorry, Bendis's, of course. Um, because, uh, and that that's the thing that Bendis oftentimes with his runs on, on everything, he ends on a very incomplete note, like he ends everything he does in a way that you're like what's next and brubaker is one of the few people that i feel really took that you know baton and kept running with it in a really good way because most other people they drop the ball it's like mm -hmm. you know honestly he he did he tried to do the baton pass with for instance like uncanny x-men a few years ago and they they tried and fumbled and like they didn't really fulfill what he was doing and i don't feel like anyone's you know, really gotten his stride with um, with Miles, and I think Miles Morales' thing is partially because they have him in the six one six, so it's a little bit more difficult uh, writing him in in that kind of way. Um, <clears throat> I, I would say maybe Kelly Thompson with Jessica Jones; she did a really, really great job of following him there. But Brew Baker, without skipping a beat, comes on. Yeah to daredevil and continues that story in a way that was just supremely entertaining and then he passes the baton as well and you know andy diggle did what he did but brubaker's story was just so 
it was great. It, it gave me a, a similar feeling. I feel like as um, as his other works on superhero stuff did. Like he he has a very distinct voice with his characters um, and the types of stories that he tells. It's very, very interesting. You know, darker type stories. There's always some sort of question mystery throughout it. And he did just a really fantastic job with Daredevil, and he was a big proponent in pushing me to want to keep reading more and more of that character. Yeah, absolutely. The I mean, I I hate Bendis. No, no surprise there. I'm not a big Bendis fan, but so like take what I'm going to say with a grain of salt. But I thought Brubaker's Daredevil was way better and way more interesting. The my absolute favorite Daredevil story of all time. I don't know. There's a lot of good Frank Miller stuff, but. This the devil in cell block D, that arc from Brubaker. Um, do you guys remember what I'm talking about? <clears throat> the the devil in cell block is that D. when he pours out a drink that's a disappointing color and <laughs> <laughs> no, that was the devil in uh room above the garage F. <laughs> if we could get F's in the chat, that'd be great. No, um, the devil in cell block D, the premise. Uh, which it kind of kicks off the run is it starts off with, with him in jail in prison, Matt Murdoch and with his powers, obviously somebody stabs and kills foggy Nelson in the first few issues and daredevil just loses his mind and people are trying to get him out of prison and he's like no i'm exactly where i want to be and there's just so and i'm not going to spoil the story but it's it is truly incredible from start to finish that arc it's six issues i believe truly incredible and at the end of that or, or it, throughout that arc like guards will come in rooms and then matt murdoch will be in the corner holding his uh his knees like he's afraid but then there'll be bodies everywhere and the guard's like, what happened? He's like, I don't know, man. I'm blind. I guess it was just like a gang fight. But then, like, everybody's taking it. It's it's truly amazing. Like, I, again, Brubaker adaptions to TV would be fantastic, but I really wanted that adapted for the next season of Daredevil so badly. Um, but it's it's great, and it's got a, a bunch of guest appearances. But I, th I thought his Daredevil work was uh, outstanding. Do you want to show some interiors? Absolutely. Book? Boy, do I. While you uh, show off some beautiful pictures, mm. what? How did you feel about uh, Andy Diggle's follow up on on that? Because he had a he had a big cliffhanger in his ending. So I haven't finished all of the Andy Diggle stuff yet. I got about halfway through it and just kind of took a break. It was okay. I didn't I didn't hate it, but I didn't just like absolutely love it. Is that Shadowland you're talking about? Yeah, yeah he he follows up uh, what. Uh, Brubaker leaves it off on a big cliffhanger, similar to what Bendis did, yeah. and then he takes that through to through like one arc of Daredevil, and then his second arc of Daredevil is all tie in for Shadowland, and then the whole Shadowland event, and then he writes like a little mini series to cap it off, and that was all in that Shadowland omnibus, um, which I actually read all of Diggle's parts of that omnibus. I skipped all the tie ins because I didn't buy it for that. I read all of those pieces. Um, did you like? Did you like Shadowlands? I was gonna say I. I thought that especially the 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 part going directly off of the first arc. That first arc was really strong. Shadowland was fine. It wasn't terrible. Like I think that maybe putting it in the context of like knowing what came before and after might mm -hmm. help its cause because we know where the character goes from there. It's no worry of like, Oh, uh, they fucked him up. They ruined the character. Like we know where he is now. Um, that might have strengthened my feelings about it. Cause I, and also I think my expectations were lowered because my expectations were bottomed out knowing that everyone was like, Oh man, Shadowland sucks. Shadowland yeah. the worst thing ever. So I go in there and I read it and I'm like, this is fine. It's a fun little event, you know, a fun little dark story uh, doing some cool fun premise. Character. Yeah, it's, it is. Mm -hmm. and it, it, the premise makes sense coming off of the end of what Brubaker did. Yeah. So it, I felt like if you read it all as one big, you know, triptych, I guess, if you will, um, then 
it works well like it it does work well and then uh i mean i guess after that you can have wade's acts as like coming off of that and lifting him back up and then what what do you call a triptych before is that like a, a pet petri tick you're the art major <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Idea. or a tetra tick uh, but it was uh yeah and then wade's is like super lighthearted and fun Tet tetra tick T E T R T E T R A P T Y C H. Wow. Yeah. Or or anything beyond three can just be a pol polyptic. Sure. Show up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you come to Omnibro's live to learn something. Yeah. That's true. Uh, Jess is gonna besmirch Ryan North. Holy yeah. smoke. Nice. So what did you what out of the ones we've talked about so far? Well, how, there's a few other super ones like superhero ones, I guess that Brubaker did. He did Batman. Well, there's a really big one that we haven't talked about. Mm -hmm. A uh, one that was oh. like what, ten years worth of stories that's been collected across five omnis, three of which are out of print. Yeah, and I can't. There's too many pops and action figures in front of that run. I can't pull that either. Um, <laughs> yeah, Cap Captain America, Captain America, uh, all the way from, you know, through the, the death of Cap and when Bucky takes over, he brings us Winter Soldier. He really influenced everything about the Cap movies and a lot of what happens in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, um, reinvigorates the character in a lot of ways for the modern era. And in a lot of ways, people have not been able to step up to what he's done uh since then i agree even though i i will admit that i had fun with what nick spencer did and uh, <laughs> you're a monster i know <laughs> coates, coates is definitely doing some good work as well oh uh, i yeah the cap run is yeah you're right dude it is his most iconic probably superhero book just extremely good was that the first no what, what came first that was that his first superhero book or Batman? I think he did Batman prior. Okay. I wasn't sure. That was my first exposure to him was Cap. I believe I, that that's the same for me. But, I mean, yeah, just a truly dynamite. It's, yeah, you nailed it. It's got a cinematic feel. Like the book, the storytelling in the book is extremely cinematic. It's, it was a no-brainer that they adapted it into the best Marvel movie. That has come out today. What, uh, yeah, and I think in Incognito counts as a superhero book too. Um, I just got done reading this a little bit earlier. He's definitely um, a superhero in this, not a DC or Marvel superhero, but he dresses up and fights crime in it. And Ooh. he's got he's got the Sean Phillips art going. So good. And, oh, it's just remarkably good. And um, this has got, um, it says, what if you were a supervillain living in witness protection and all you could think about were the glory days of being bad when the rules didn't apply to you before you were just like everybody else? Incognito's story begins where others end and goes places no graphic novel has gone before. <laughs> Never heard that tagline before. <laughs> it's really awesome. I loved it. Change the Marvel Universe. <laughs> Somehow, even though it's not a Marvel character, it will change the Marvel Universe as we know it. Yeah. I haven't read the book, but the art is amazing. Yeah. This, yeah, you'd love the story, uh, Tyler. It's great. So I'll, I'll admit I'm not really too familiar though with his uh, DC work on Batman. And I still, oh, you're not? Okay. Um, and you know, don't, don't choke me out for this, but I still haven't read Gotham central. <laughs> what? Me I either. Don't. Sons of bitches. <laughs> it's the greatest book ever written. I don't know, man. I heard it was. I heard it wasn't that good compared to Ryan North and um, the Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. The Unbeatable yeah, did, Squirrel Girl. I did specifically hear someone mention an Unbeatable Squirrel Girl in relation to 
Ed Rubaker. There was a discussion. It was it was actually very <laughs> recent. And someone was talking about how Ed Brubaker was the best comic book writer, and someone it popped was, out of the corner. This and said, duck I was say the the squirrel name. Girl. Yeah, it was this duck that was making the squirrel girl <laughs> remark. <laughs> Come I on. say the day. I say the day. <laughs> Gotham Central, right here. Uh, which, uh, let's see, Brubaker did the day shift and Rucka did the night shift, or was it the other way around? One of them did the day shift, the other did the night shift, and it was a tour de force of brilliant crime writing. So that has to be your favorite book of all time, right? If he, yeah. if those are your two favorite writers, my two favorite writers. Yep, yep. And since my memory's so bad, I can read it like every six months, and it's a brand <laughs> new experience. Oh, Amazing. being old. <laughs> oh, being old. Yep. Uh. Yeah. I've heard nothing but good things about that. And actually, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but there used to be a guy in our group. You probably don't because he was four. And uh, his name was Lewis, Lewis McGregor. You, probably, you guys probably don't know. You probably don't know. He, was, he was wild. But he actually made a playlist on Spotify called Gotham Central. That oh, he did? Listen to while you read Gotham Central. And I listened to the crap out of that playlist. But – not not, not reading while, not while reading it no just reading other books so, <laughs> i don't know if that makes it better or worse i'm surprised you two haven't read this book it really is a masterpiece geo have you read this book uh one quarter of the book wow yeah. it just wasn't good enough for geo <laughs> no, no, i'm really bad. shocked I forgot to keep going. I'm sorry. You forgot <laughs> to keep going. You know what? It, as ridiculous as that sounds, mm -hmm. I did that with uh, Jeff John's Teen Titans. I've read about a quarter of that book, and I forgot to keep reading it. Oh, that so, now that's a good book. Did you just forget? It you was know? good too. I was enjoying it, and then I think like I put it down one day because I, I I needed to read something else instead. I was like, oh, the, I, I need to catch up on this series that I'm already whatever, like whatever happened. And then eventually I like it was on my bedside table and I was like uh, cleaning up. So I put it back on the shelf and something like that. You know, life happens, but Absolutely. somehow life uh, finds a way and I will read it. <laughs> life <laughs> finds a way. <laughs> life <laughs> finds a way. No, it's not life. Same thing. Life, uh, life uh, finds a way. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I just realized I did the same thing with Dan Slot Silver Surfer, so that's shameful. So there you go. We've all done it except for Jess. Too many crickets. Did you know with Slot Silver Surfer? I, know. I, I feel like we're it. we're all doing it with like very simple. <laughs> <here. I> like, <laughs> it's it's not like oh I stopped reading uh Harley Quinn, yeah. <laughs> I stopped reading Scott Lobdell's X Men. It's oh. like not something that everyone's like, eh, whatever. I don't care. <laughs> I stopped reading Jeff Loeb's Hulk that's getting an omnibus next week. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so here's what I'd be interested to see <clears throat> out of all the superhero books, what do you guys and the people in the chat, the people watching after the fact that this is live, and the podcast people, all of you people, out of Never. all the superhero books, which what Brew Baker did you find to be the best and and most enjoyable? Well, we so haven't just the superhero books. What superhero or not? Yeah, just just Brew oh, Baker superhero. superhero. Okay. If you could only pick one, which one becomes the Highlander? Uh, it's uh, Captain America. Uh, I'm going to say Iron Fist because I've not read that Captain America run. I know. <gasps> it's okay. Did you forget? <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't I've never read it. Didn't even start. Yeah. Yeah. No time to forget. I'm with Geo. I haven't read the Captain America run, so I'm gonna have to go with Iron Fist. Hmm. Interesting. Even over Gotham Central. What? I don't really consider that a oh, okay. hero book. That's okay. more of a crime okay. story. Okay. Fair mm -hmm. enough. Now, Jess, I I am gonna say I am disappointed um, that you haven't read it because a it would be one hundred percent up your alley, 
this is Captain America. Yes, and B, you have the books. You don't have to spend your life tracking these books down like everyone else has. You, you've been blessed by having these books in your collection. Yeah, I've had them for like five years. <laughs> it should be like I, I know you're doing your your War of Kings uh readathon and you're getting into the your final like you're getting into the final book, right? On that. Uh I am uh second to last book. I'm reading War of Kings now and then Aftermath next. So this should be I don't know what readathons you have planned, but I don't care. You should be reading Captain America. That should be my next readathon? It, it really should be. Unless I told you to read something else ahead of this and I was adamant about that. <laughs> um, I totally agree. You said something about um uh Superman Exile, I think. No, I did not. I've never read that. <laughs> I don't I know <laughs> nothing. Maybe that was Lewis. I don't know. No, I you didn't. Uh <laughs> I'll, I, that's fine. If you think I should really read it that much, I'm. That's a great next uh, readathon. For I me. I feel like you should read it because me knowing you and knowing your tastes and how you feel about comics, and that it's readily available. Uh, footnote there, you will enjoy this. You will definitely enjoy this. And it's Tyler said it. It's very cinematic, so it's very easy to read. It's very easy to get sucked in. Mm -hmm. I read the entire first omnibus in like one shift at work. Oh uh, wow! Like yeah, back when I first got it several years ago, I sat down. I was working in a projection booth where I had like two hour chunks of time where I could just sit there and read. And I read it in there was like two or three different chunks of time that I sat there. So a good four or five hours of reading. And I just churned through that 25 page or 25 issues. It was so interesting and engrossing. And I went into that really not knowing anything about Captain America, except for seeing him as a piece of other teams. Yeah. Um, that's and, probably the same with me. So I, I went in there with that very little idea of who he was. And really what I had known was from reading, um, I, I, I've read all of the major events in the Marvel Universe. And so I knew what happened around this run, but I'd never read the run itself. And then I, I got into it and I was like, wow, this is phenomenal. And it does dip. It's not perfect in, in, in its entirety, but it's very much well re reading especially for uh i mean for several reasons but he gives us back bucky and introduces mm. us to the winter soldier and that is such a compelling character and it has such great artwork and i know like you'll find a lot of artists that you enjoy because it has epting and lark mm. and uh later on you get um I think even Francesco Francavia has some issues in there towards the end. It's so good. Like, I, I think that you will, uh, this will top your, uh, any other choice for, for Brew Baker as far as superhero books. And it might go towards the top of your superhero books in general. Whoa, that is a super strong recommendation. He's not that, wrong, though. That has bones of adamantium in them. <laughs> Holy smoke! Yeah, okay, it, it's amazing. It is okay. Wow, nothing more to be said about it. Okay, I will take apart the fortress of pops and action figures that are surrounding <laughs> it and uh, gently pull the books out. It'll be worth it. All right, be rough with number Done. two. Be real rough with volume two. You know, yeah, you need around. to like toss it around and open it <laughs> all flippy and like toss it on the ground. Yeah. It, make sure you read it on the toilet, wherever you go. <laughs> Just the shit out of it, man. Like oh, too funny. Yeah. It, Brubaker's is great. Highlight your important passages. <laughs> A lot of people agreeing with you in the chat. ETL is agreeing. Nick Schmidt is agreeing. Thank you. Uh, Benjamin Pineros is saying so best cap ever ever of all times I've not read 600 plus issues of Captain America but it's my favorite Captain America I've, I've read everything from that point forward can you so, get the, can you get the run in in another format that's not omnibus so the you can but there's every format there's something that's out of print, out of print. yeah figured that's the problem I'm hoping that with Marvel's uh 
knack for reprinting things in thicker editions nowadays that mm -hmm. they'll return to reprinting uh, his cap maybe because they, they did do like the complete collection of uh, the Winter Soldier, like Captain America Winter Soldier complete collection one and two and then Captain America Red Menace complete collection one and two, Captain America Death of Captain America complete collection. But then they didn't go any further. So I'm hoping maybe they'll revisit that and just do Cap by Brubaker complete collection volume one through like 10 or however many it takes. Kind of like they did with Bru uh, sorry Bendis's uh, Avengers stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's always Marvel Unlimited. Yes, that that is true. I would be very surprised if that entire run is not yeah. on Marvel Unlimited. Yeah, it's on there. It's okay. absolutely on there. So that would be a, a really good option. And, you know, as much as it pains me to say the artwork does look beautiful on digital, it's a great option to read it. If your options are don't read it or read it on Marvel Unlimited, read it on Marvel Unlimited. Like oh, yeah. There's probably going to be a free month, honestly, for those who don't follow Marvel Unlimited very well. Every time there's a major movie that comes out, they usually do a free month with a promo code. And so Spider-Man's coming out in just a few short weeks, relatively speaking. <laughs> X-Men so, <laughs> Phoenix movie just came out. Right, so Spider Man's coming out. The next big <laughs> good Marvel, the next big good movie coming out, Spider Man. <laughs> I've already so, got my tickets for Spider Man. Uh, you too? With my wife. I was waiting for Raleigh to be like, me too. I do, I do. He with does. his wife? That's yes. Different. With my wife, yeah. Yeah, with Patty. Me and Patty are going to go see yeah. uh, <laughs> Spider Man together. <laughs> Actually, before right. you, I'm flying out on the second, <laughs> right. seven p.m. show, and then like two days later, yeah, that would be the best committed bit of all time. Like if you, <laughs> act, if you actually did that, that would be like the most epic bit of all time. And then you tweeted Jess from the theater with that. Oh, that would be incredible. Have like a selfie of of me with Patty. <laughs> like, so what's amazing. up? And then for fun, like Jess's daughter is there too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, my heroes have always been junkies. Great. So we're heading uh, into the non superhero, the I non. Think, big yeah, two. I think we've uh, we've already done it. I'd like to talk about Kill or Be Killed, and my heroes have always been junkies. Oh. I couldn't wait to uh, for the deluxe edition of this. I may donate this to the library or sell it to Second and Charles, or I may just keep these. Uh, but this is a very thin book. Um, I guess it's pulled from uh, Criminal, maybe. I, I, I'm i not sure how it works. Maybe the chat knows how it works. Um, I think it was – It's. I haven't read it, but I've been reading his current run on Criminal, and in the letters at the back, he mentions it. And I think he says in there that it is from the Criminal universe. Okay, but it's not pulled from the Criminal he – Current no, comic book. No, 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 no. It's okay. it's an original graphic novel, but it's right. it's written to be part of that universe of stories. Right. Um, this is brilliantly well done with brilliant art as usual, and it deals with a woman, young woman who romanticizes junkies, um, drug addicts, uh, specifically uh, artists, singers. She's seen in rehab where she uh, makes a connection with a guy, another rehab guy in there for rehab. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't want to say too much more about the plot, but they fall in love and um, it goes from there and becomes an amazing story. She's a bit of a wild child. And when I, when I say bit of a wild child, she's a way wild child. Here she is in her youth, uh, listening to Billie Holiday albums, and um, you know, just thinking Billie Holiday shooting up smack is the greatest thing ever, pouring her heart out into her songs. And so she grows up thinking that uh, doing drugs is really cool. And it's she's got a really dangerous, romantic view of drugs and. Um, it shows, um, you know, AA meetings and uh, NA meetings and things to an alarmingly realistic degree. And I say that as um, I say that as uh, 
Uh, an alcoholic who just hit his 11th year in sobriety. Thank you very much. I appreciate the applause. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but it, it shows the uh, the meetings. And then, of course, it shows the parties that happen to the people that slip and, you know, don't go to meetings. They end up, uh, you know, having parties and getting blasted and doing stuff. And I totally can see that happening. And he shows it all very realistically. And I can I can. I, you, you would benefit if you did um, know uh, your criminal stories backwards and forwards, but you can also just pick this right up and enjoy it by itself. I had no problem. I've, I've read both criminal books uh, a couple times, but it was a couple years ago, and I don't remember that universe that well, but this is... Um, uh, easy to read and just understand by itself. And it's really well done. Really, really well done. This is, uh, this woman is just a piece of work and he nails her right down to the T. So I highly enjoyed this book. And um, thank you to the chat. I appreciate that. I very much appreciate that. Um, uh, for the congratulations. That's very nice. Thank you. Peace and love. Peace and love. You know, it's it's, it's a miracle that we're even on on YouTube right now. Just saying. What? Because I could have had a drink and fucked it all no, up? No, 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 no. Because oh. uh, YouTube is down for the majority of the East Coast right now. Oh, I it is? Yeah, I can't even access my account. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. I've been... Trying as you're talking, I'm listening and I'm looking online, and everybody's complaining right now on Twitter and all that stuff. <laughs> oh, but wow! Oh, are we even live right now? I see the yeah, circle no, spinning on Riley right now. We're live. I, we I can still hear y'all. I I don't know why it's spinning on me. Huh? A few people did say earlier in the chat. I noticed one or two people said they were getting a lot of buffering, um, which I originally chalked up to maybe just internet, but. Perhaps YouTube. Today's been a big day for YouTube. I go home today. <laughs> Is it some uh, sort of like DDoS attack because people were upset about getting demonetized? I wouldn't be surprised. Maybe. Especially considering the people who they demonetize are the type of people who would get butt hurt and do something <laughs> like that. Tissue <laughs> Russell. <laughs> Rump Russell. Yes. Um, there's a lot of other books we can talk about, but I'll talk quickly about the previous book that I finished. I couldn't wait to read it. So I went ahead and read it. Um, I think I got the DC. Oh, I didn't get the DCBS variants for all four of them. That blows. Oh, that's so embarrassing. Many. Are you sure you even want to show them at this point? Like that's kind of, <laughs> I'm just going to end the show now. God, so, man. so Jess, have you read that book entirety? This in entirety? Yeah. I have, yeah. Sell it to me because I try I have volume one and I cannot seem to get into it. I don't oh, know. Really? Sell it to no. me because I don't know. Very interesting. Well, it's got uh, as usual, great art by the fabulous Sean Phillips and great coloring by Elizabeth Fretweiser. Um it um he's um I, I guess I can see, you know, I can see, I, this is actually, I can see how, why maybe the first volume didn't grab you because it wasn't until the second volume that it really sank it into me, sank its claws into me and really grabbed me. Um, I can see that because what it is, is this depressed grad student tries to kill himself, uh, wakes up. Uh, alive um, and uh, he has a visit from this demon that claims that he's alive because of this demon and this demon now has uh, said that this guy needs to start killing um, bad guys in order for uh, there to be 
uh, a balance in payments. You know, I saved your life from you jumping off that ledge. Now you need to start um, killing all the bad guys that I want you to. And it becomes uh, a, not only a sort of street level superhero book where the guy, um, the guy uh, uh, weapons up and covers up his face and starts, you know, from the, it'd be like if you or I, you or me put on a hood, uh, a hoodie and a mask and got a gun or a bat and just went out and tried to solve, you know, take on these guys uh, like Russian mobsters or, uh, drug dealers, you know, with no training whatsoever. Um, and, uh, he, he screws things up at first. Um, he goes after the wrong people. The guy, he wants to get out of it, but the demon spirit keeps him going. Um, and then there's the possibility that he's not really right in the head. That is this really even happening? There's the possibility his father was a, a famous um, artist for sort of a subculture, um, subculture, um, uh, psychedelic, uh, not psychedelic, but underground art uh, magazines back in the 60s. And he finds a treasure trove of his artwork. I don't want to give too much away, but, um, but, uh, he ends he ends up uh, going after things like child molesters and things like that and he's got a girlfriend and a roommate that he has to deal with there's four books of this and it gets more and more complex and he gets the shit kicked out of him more and more times and the deeper you go into this the more it becomes a question of is this real or is this just an imagination of his an illusion, a hallucination, and you're trying to figure out is, is the demon real? Is the demon an illusion? Are these crimes real? Is he really fighting? Um, is he, is it, what he's fighting real? Um, so it, it becomes a real psychologically complex horror fantasy um crime thriller it's a really a big mix of genres and i um he's dealing with this girlfriend the whole time because at first the girl is going out with his roommate and then eventually she ends up going out with him uh he undergoes some changes and i the one thing that i would um really like to see um, in the hardcover is all the extras that are going to be in there because Sean Phillips um, has done an awful lot with these covers and stuff huh? that I would love to see. Um, I would love to see the extras that would be in the um, that would be in the the hardcover. And I I guess it's already been announced. I'm not sure when it comes out, but I. I think that I know what I'll do. I will just send you these uh, trades, Geo, and I'll just buy the hardcover myself. And then that way you can figure it out. You can read okay. it yourself. Perfect. And you can read nice. it yourself and decide. And I'll have the hardcovers and I'll have the extras. There you go. Good. You're doing Jets a favor by taking these from him. <laughs> I mean, he wants to buy the hardcovers. He just can't bring himself to double dip. So you're helping him out. All right. All right. Yeah, sure. I mean, like I have volume one and at first glance, I thought, okay, this is like an American version of Death Note for some reason. But uh, the way you're describing it now, it seems like it's a supernatural uh, death wish kind of movie. So now I'm a little bit intrigued and I kind of want to see where the story goes. I wasn't too impressed at first, but I'm willing to give yeah, it a shot. All the he way spends through. time in a mental institution and he, he spends, uh, he's, he does, uh, I mean, it's pretty complex and he messes with the wrong guys and they come after him and 
he starts offing them one by one and he he he's trying to get out of it and you know the demon won't let him and it's you know it's it's four books so it's it's a lot more than just what i'm saying it goes it goes uh, a lot of different places um and he, he's you know seeing a therapist and stuff it it's super um it's very complex psychologically so it goes a lot of places i think if you if you read through book one and read through book two you will be hooked enough okay. to want to read all four nice it sounds too scary for me i'm out <laughs> That one uh, got me from from issue one. I I started it as it was coming out, and I was like, "Man, this is this is cool." I think I think Luis was in the same book because if I'm not mistaken, he's a huge fan of that series too. I think you're right. Yeah, he is. I, I think he like along with me, we were both hyping up that series from issue number one and telling people to get in on it. Um, yeah. I, I really like, like that one a lot. And I, I'll i admit, I really haven't read a lot of Brubaker's uh, image. Like, I haven't read all the old criminal, and I haven't read uh, Incognito. Um, I haven't read Fatal. Excuse me. What? But I've read The Fade Out. I've read. Oh, Fade Out's awesome. Velvet. I've read Killer Be Killed. Um. I have Fatal, and I have Incognito. Well, that's good because the first book of Fatal is badly out of print. All of a sudden, oh really? That's not fun. Mm, no. I also have, but have not read Sleeper. Um, and I have, I have, and have read that little scene of the crime hardcover. Oh yeah, where is that? Right here. That's this book. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I have read that one. Yeah, now wait, that's got Michael Lark on art with Sean Phillips. Wait, what is that? Michael Lark is the penciler and Sean Phillips is an inker. Huh, controversy. <laughs> boy, oh boy. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> wow, people are asking for a ton of money on that Fatal book. Uh, really, what are they asking? 110, 120 bucks. Wow. For the first hardcover. Is this Amazon or eBay? Ooh. Amazon or eBay? eBay. eBay? eBay. Yeah. Well, What's it sold for? Let me check. Because uh, I know Sleeper Omnibus had, had gotten up there around 100, 110, oh, something like 120. Uh, it's sold for like 80 to 90 bucks. Wow. On average. Oh man. My best friend Beto Rio says that my heroes have always been junkies. Hardcovers out of print also. Yeah, I saw that, but then Brooks followed that up by saying it's, I think it was Brooks followed that up by saying it's getting a reprint. Oh, good. Uh, you know, so we forgot about his Catwoman run. Um, oh, yeah. Oh. Catwoman runs right here. I, I have that. That was, that was great. <laughs> oh, trade it. reprint. It's coming out as a trade reprint. Beto yeah. is on top of his game. He's got, um, he does have another book coming from Image uh, in the same vein, I think. Another original graphic novel. That man knows how to write. It's very cinematic. All his work has that has that factor in common. Like even something like Fatal just straight out reads like you're watching a noir movie, and it's glorious yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so Heroes have uh, always been jumping. As <laughs> I've always been jumping, is getting a <laughs> soft cover reprint, according to the chat. The chat among those. Uh, Beto says it's. And Benjamin says, yeah, Bad Weekend is coming out yeah, in Bad Weekend. cover. I'm looking forward to that. Now, that, I think, has been pulled from the criminal. Am I mistaken? Has it been pulled from the criminal? I'm pretty sure itself? that's – yeah. pre I'm pretty sure it's also criminal universe, but I don't – 
I don't think that it's a collection of the issues of the new book. Oh, it's an original um, graphic novel? I think that it, it, it is. It says, uh, let me check, uh, Bad Weekend, uh, the story, whatever, in Criminal number two and three, and have been expanded with several new scenes added and oh. remastered into a hardcover. Mm. Ah. Okay. So remastered. All right, fair. Collects criminal to issues two and three. Yeah. Okay. So also an interesting fact about Brubaker is that he joined the writing staff for Westworld in 2016. The show. Expand yeah. upon that, would you? Uh, well, he co-wrote the episode Dissonance Theory with Jonathan Nolan, who's Christopher Nolan's brother, who's uh, well known for filmography and, and writing and stuff like that. But I'm not sure how much influence he's had on each individual script, but he, I think he's still on, on staff at HBO, which is really interesting because we were kind of talking about how cinematic his stuff is. Yeah. And he's won like a gajillion Eisner awards for so mm -hmm. many of his books. Like he's recognized as one of the greats in the industry for sure. Um, it looks like he's won about 10 Eisner awards, which is pretty impressive. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Fatal is awesome, and apparently, for some reason, this book is out of print. Um, that's a crime. I I loved the mixture of of Cthulhu and uh, mystery in this. I love the science fiction horror mystery part. So I I loved this book. Yeah, if you can get it, it's a it's a fun read. Now, I is it still if they can't get it in hardcover, it's still available in soft cover, right? Mm -hmm. In stock trades has the uh, trades. Nice. Well, I would definitely recommend getting Vital in uh, soft cover then. And I know now that once again, Criminal Volume One is out of print. Mm -hmm. Those mysterious warehouse finds have now gone out of print again, out of print again. And, um, yeah. but I believe I'm almost a hundred percent sure, um, that uh, this is available in trades as well. Yeah. Uh, image once they started, uh, publishing, or when they they brought it over to Image, started releasing the paperbacks again. So there is a in print set of uh, paperback editions. Right. So don't be dissuaded if you're a hardcover lover like we all are. It's mm -hmm. important to just get the books. Criminal deserves to be read. Velvet, well, Velvet, no problem, but I mean, Fatal deserves to be read, so get those in soft cover. Um, there's always a chance they'll be re be reprinted, since he owns the books, owns the imprint. It's up to him. So, um, and Ben is in the chat saying that Kill or Be Killed movie is coming with Brew Baker writing the script and the director for John Wick. Hmm. You should just see if it was the first John. Well, I believe the first John Wick was directed by. Was it the same director as the second, or were there two directors on John isn't Wick? That, isn't it the same for all three? I thought. What movie had two directors? I can't remember. Right, that's, but that's really interesting. Um, I bet you it's going to be really good. I heard it was directed by the guy that did the most recent Hellboy movie. I'm that. totally kidding. I was like, oh, well, I didn't think it was a movie, but uh, totally kind of getting some Dark Phoenix vibes there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chad Stalisky, uh, he's done all three John Wick movies. He's directed all three. Written by Derek Kolstad. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, there you go. I just watched John Wick three the other day. Man, was it good? The, there, I'll I will say there's a middle part that kind of dragged a little bit, and it was late, so I kind of nodded off for a minute or so. Um, but aside from that, there was everything that I wanted from a John Wick movie. 
and more. I heard there's a fight in like a giant glass room or something. Yes. That's just incredible. It's so cool. There's and there's some there's more fun characters. There's more fun ways to die. Um <laughs> that should be the name of your movie. Yeah. More fun ways to die. Uh John Wick 15, more fun ways to die. <laughs> but it yeah, it, it definitely you know, scratched that itch. And it, it also did a really interesting job of expanding that world um, of John Wick. Um, speaking of that, there was a John Wick comic that came out by Greg Pak, and it was okay. But I feel like Brubaker would be a really good writer for a John Wick mm -hmm. comic. That would be amazing. Like bring that that sense of you know noir to it. Oh man, now I'm making myself excited. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Keep the camera above your the waist. <laughs> this, is, this is a PG show. Did you uh you got the comic book I sent you? I did. Do you want me to get it? Uh sure. And this is gonna be a not if it's a big a hack. project. Oh, it's, well, well then uh, never mind. No, it's in the kit. I'm already halfway there. Oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say this this apartment's tiny, but it's actually square footage wise bigger than my house was. Oh, is that right? Um I'm just gonna bring it over here and put it down. I'm hoping that my dogs have not been ripping everything into shreds while I'm down here because Megan's out of town again and uh I can't watch everyone. She's looking at me like she did something. <laughs> That's such a bad feeling when dogs look at you like, oh boy. I'm going to be in trouble. So I got that uh, Archie 7 with art by Art Baltazar. And uh, who's his partner, Art Baltazar? And there's awesome. something else that he works with when he does those. And I asked for Jess on the one he sent me to give me a little Siggy right here. Aww. So Jess signed it and gave me the little Omnidog stamp of approval. It got a little and, smeared. I'm sorry. That, hey, that's okay. And, uh, and my, he's there on the cover. My plan, <laughs> my Omni dog is there on the cover. That's great. My plan uh, for this book is going to be to get all of the guys from the show to sign it. Very cool. It is the the first comic book that was published. This this variant, if if anyone watching doesn't know, this was the um, the comic books for kids variant cover. They only had, what was it like 500 or something? Oh, like no, that? 125, 130. Oh, some, some Maybe. low amount of copies. Yeah. Real low were, amount. Uh, were published for this book. And we were graced with a pretty good chunk of them because of the, um, the work that the show did to raise promote. Yeah. Raise money for them. Raise money and promote them and all that Very stuff. Cool. So, um, I thought it was really cool. It's the first comic that we've been sent by, you know, that's been distributed to us uh, as an entity. So I wanted to to get everyone's signatures and stuff. And once I do that, I'd like to do something like put it on my wall in a little frame. Um, nice. I don't want to desecrate it with my own signature. But, <laughs> but you're a bro. <laughs> my signature is bullshit. You gotta put it on there, dude. You have to. Just write Riley then. Absolutely. <laughs> let me let me grab my here's my my license and that's my signature. Oh, it's so good. That's a great signature. That's awesome. Wait, you show it again. Famous when it's just like one squiggly line. Oh, that's actually a cool signature. Yeah, absolutely. It's really fancy. I'm cool. a big fan of that. Thanks everyone for trying to gas me up. <laughs> Sign it. Sign it. Sign it. You know your true friends when you show them something stupid and they're like, "That's great." It's so yeah. good. It's also, so you know we're all nerds when we're like chanting, "Sign it, sign it," instead of like, "Drink, drink, drink." No, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna if, if I do or when I do, I, I'll, I'll sign it. But when I do, it'll be I'll be the last one to put my name on it. Very cool. Very cool. So, Gio, you haven't got yours yet, I'm guessing. Okay. I'll let everybody know. I was okay. surprised you got here so fast. Yeah, I thought so too. And I, Omar hasn't got his yet. How's that happen? I, I guess know. when it crosses the border into Kentucky, it's a <laughs> different world. Who knows what happens in Kentucky? I don't. 
cranberry juice and bourbon is what happens apparently. Yeah, that's still the oddest thing ever. <laughs> um, the fade out. This book was so great that I gave it to my sister for Christmas, and she liked it. Um, I still can't get over how good this book is. Um, I mean, you can talk about the ending to multiple people and get multiple takes on it, I think. Um, I think Tyler and I talked about it, um, didn't we? And we both felt different ways about the ending or something. If we did, that would be a miracle because I haven't read it. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be awesome if we did talk about that. We had like a full length combo about how the end was <laughs> totally different for both of us, and I never read it. Uh, and I'd love to say I was drunk, but I wasn't. <laughs> uh, I drunk and I forgot, and I just made it up. But no, that's not the case. This is um, takes place right at the height of the McCarthy hearings and the HUAC committee back in the late 40s, early 50s, the House and American Activities Committee in the Senate hearings. And um, Hollywood uh, has a smear campaign against all anybody that has anything to do with communism. And uh, there's a lot going on in this book that has a lot to do with crime and sex and um, mystery and um, death and the killing of a particular person and trying to figure out who it was that did it. Uh, Ryder getting the shit kicked out of him. And uh, it's all kinds of stuff that happens in this book. Typical Brubaker with multiple layers, multiple places uh multiple things happening um all set against the backdrop of um, the cold war at its height with uh, the red scare going on really deep in hollywood uh back then and it's um it's pretty amazing it's it's uh it's, you know, my sister is a book publisher and a writer herself, and this is the book I chose to send her because I just thought it was a great representation of comic books. And so... That's impressive. It was, it's, um, it's hard to beat this book. I'm sorry that we disagreed so strongly on the ending. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to really like it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Conversations from the future. <laughs> yeah, that's it, that's it. Future Tyler had an issue with I the really didn't like it. And I couldn't tell you why. <laughs> um, uh, who, which, uh, who among you has read Velvet? I'm going to disappoint you and say that I started on my tablet and I have not finished that book. What's going on with you, Gio? I'm sorry. I, I, I know I failed you tonight. <laughs> anybody else you're the velvet master here man you were <laughs> that's you were, right velvet was super popular the first time <laughs> then it went out of style now velvet's back you know, mm -hmm. my, appearance and perform. my tux my <laughs> senior year in college for prom uh was velvet oh my gosh that's amazing uh it was oh yeah Oh, we got to see these pictures. We we have to. See I can them. I can. Uh, if we had more time, I could probably go exact find it exactly and um, spam the comments on this video. We demand to see Jess in velvet. <laughs> it was red velvet. Oh, that's incredible! With a pink shirt. That's a dream. And a red. Uh, I don't remember what color my tie was, but yeah, it was like a red velvet uh, sort of fabric. Uh, anyway. Velvet is um, a thriller, a spy thriller, and she kicks ass totally. I can't imagine Faria doing anything but loving this book. Uh, <laughs> there's, like, no chads, and there's, you know, ass-kicking women all over the place. Velvet is a super awesome spy in this book, and she's just remarkably amazing with tons of cliffhangers. Tons of um, tons of amazing action, and she is just an um, amazing spy. With it's a uh, 
just mission after mission for Velvet, and it's one of the few books that he's not done with um, Sean Phillips. He's d he does it with Steve Epting, and uh, I think Brett Weiser does the art. Uh, I'm sorry, the colors again. And this is a rollicking book. Um, I loved it. I could I could read it. Um, I think I just got done with it for the fourth time. I could read it again and just have a blast with it again. It is um, it is top notch crime and mystery spy thriller, and I just think it's a blast. He, this guy, the more I talk about him, the more I want to do a Brew Baker a thon and just read every single thing he's done. Starting with Captain America, no doubt. Yeah, well, I'm definitely doing that. That's a that that's about as hot a, a recommendation recommendation as I've gotten. That was Riley at his uh, most furious. Uh, <laughs> it's it's been a, a a good minute since I've given you one too, I feel like, like yeah. I've been really lukewarm on things and I've been like, ah, I don't think you'll like this. I don't know. But, uh, I, I didn't know that you hadn't read his captain America. Right. So maybe I need to start knowing more about what you haven't read so that I can recommend you to take on some of these things. Mm. Okay. There it is. But, um, I'm going to have to start getting out of here. I have to wake up at four 30 for work. So, um, Ooh. Yeah, not that not blows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's early. Mm -hmm. That's to bounce too in just a minute. Yeah, so well, we pretty much covered just about everything. I think we've covered criminal, fatal, everything else. We didn't talk right, about first. Catwoman or Sleeper, but we've talked about just about everything else. We demand to see Jess in Red Velvet. Yes. All right, I will. Uh, I will. And a um, red, and a red velvet cake too. <laughs> I will do my best to go find that uh, um, picture. I'll do it right after the show. I'll see if I can find it for next Thursday's show. So perfect. <laughs> I think I had a red tie on. So I'm I'm really uh, satisfied with the discussion that we had about the creator here. So I'm I'm looking forward to doing more in the future, and hopefully, you know, I I who would you who would you like to talk about next? Uh, duh, duh not Grant Morrison. Choose somebody else. <laughs> uh, butthole. Let's do Kelly. Let's do Kelly. Next Kelly week. sued a comic or yeah. Joe Kelly. No, let's do KSD next week. I don't uh, think she has enough of a body of work. Let's pick somebody like... Uh, that'd be a quicker show. I, I think maybe <laughs> Warren Ellis would make a good one. Ooh. Um, Rucka uh, might be a good one. Remender? Remender could be a fun one. I, I could do Remender, mm. seriously, because I've read like everything he's done. Close to. Yeah, I've read a bunch of that stuff. Have you read... Um, Wait, I just got a new book by him. Um, let's see, what's it called? It's his Deadly class season one canceled. Don't stop. Yeah, stupid uh, sci-fi. Yeah, that's too bad. Uh, Death and Glory. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For the racing. Yeah, that comic. one. That one was. Uh, Have pretty you read that? Beautiful artwork too. By, yeah, Omar uh, said it was good, but it's it's been on hiatus for a minute, which I believe is because he's trying to focus on wrapping up all the other stuff he's been working on. Because I think, um, I know Lo is finishing up, Black yeah. uh, Black Science is finishing up, and I'm pretty sure Deadly Class is also coming towards its end. Mm. I'm not 100 percent sure on that one, mm. but I, I know the other two. I saw a guy with a Low T-shirt at work the other day, and like, I was like dude, that's a really nice t-shirt. And then he he was like, oh, thanks. And then I said something to the effect of like, I'm excited that he's uh, finally wrapping the series up. And then he laughs and he goes, um, I didn't know if you basically like, I didn't know if you actually knew what this shirt was because the <laughs> last person that said that's a cool shirt was like, I really love that band. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know if Greg Tocchini has done the artwork for some band's album somewhere, but there's a band called Low. Oh, is there? Yeah. And they have artwork by Greg Tocchini. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's a band called Low. Huh. 
I well, think I even have an album by them. Whatever the case be, um, that was a fun little interaction. But yeah, Grant Morrison for sure. Uh, you're a hater. I'm not a hater. <laughs> I need to get out of here. Uh, Megan's actually calling me from Chicago right now. All right. Okay. All right. Peace out. See you, brother. Y'all have a good one. Okay. So before we wrap it up, let's talk about a little bit about InStockTrades.com, yes. where you can get your collected editions up to 50% off. Loyalty discounts add 2% to that. There's bound to be an Omnibros Live discount code coming up here in the quarter. But wait, there's more. Nice. Over $50 in an order, thank you, gets you free shipping in the United States of America. Fabulous customer service. Fabulous packaging. That's in stocktrades.com. We love That's them. beautiful. Thank you, buddy. Thank you for appearing on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me on my last appearance. This is it. This is great. I'll what do you mean? The show after this, no doubt. What's that? I said I'm sure I'll be banned from the show after this, no doubt. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, come on. No. I, I would like to point out to the chat, yeah, <laughs> that it's a well-known fact. I have a lot of beef with one of the Omnibros, the only oh. Omnibro that I have never done an Omnibros live stream with at this point. His name starts with an L and ends with an Uis. I'm like, you guys figure it out. And I'm waiting for that punk to get on this show. Can you smell what I'm cooking, brother? Brother. <laughs> one day. One day. <laughs> I can't wait to tell him he's done got called out. Oh, he's been called out. <laughs> Gio, <laughs> where can they find you on the uh, the interwebs? Well, if YouTube doesn't crash and burn yeah, in right. the next 24 hours, you can find me at A Week in Geekdom, where I talk about anime, manga, movies, and comic books. That's A Week in Geekdom. And you can find me, Omnidog, on Omnidog's Vault, where I just uh, uploaded an overview of Doctor Strange, Sorcerer Supreme, Volume 2. Nice. And I also am in the middle of uh, doing an overview of Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 4. And I'm going to do a couple more overviews. And uh, I was 25 minutes into a haul video and freaking iMovie froze on me. Oh. And now I got to redo it. Oh, oh boy. I, I, was, I had so many snappy one-liners too, man. I was so funny. <laughs> oh, kills me. Feel uh, and uh, this Saturday, at some point, probably in the late afternoon, I will upload the latest uh, video from A Walk in the Woods at Midnight. Uh, that's uh, the Jenny and Jess show where we review scary movies. And I was supposed to watch a scary one today, but it's so scary that I um, was too scared to watch it. So now I'm going to be backed up tomorrow. I got to watch two scary movies tomorrow. And I'm really, one of them is not that scary. The other one is so scary, I'm too afraid to watch it. So, I'm, I, I created a monster. Why did I do this? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I did this. And you can find me at local Mark Hamill convention. Um, thank you, Benjamin. I appreciate that, especially coming from you, uh, as since you're such a horror aficionado, that means a lot to to me coming from uh, coming from you. Uh, so Tyler, what would you like to plug? Anything you'd like to plug? I would like to plug. Uh, yeah, just you know, general peace, general love, and a whole lot of Mark Hamill. There you go. You can and Dr. Pepper. And Dr. P this episode brought to you by 
Dr. Pepper. Oh God, this is embarrassing. This episode <laughs> brought to you by Dr. Pepper Dark Cherry Berry. Dr. Pepper Dark Berry, the official drink of both Spider-Man Far From Home and the Omnibros. Use your special code to get more Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper, the drink of champions. Nice. <laughs> oh boy let's see uh i think that's it uh thank you to the chat you guys are great tonight and uh we appreciated all the support we appreciate those of you who watch us and uh we appreciate ist if you could guys please hit the like button uh, the more of you that hit the like button that somehow does something to the algorithm that helps us with YouTube, uh, please go to uh, the podcast on iTunes and leave a review. Yeah. Am I getting that right, Gio? Do you know? Gio, are you still with me? Okay. Uh, go to uh, Podcast uh, Addict on... Um, podcast Addict. Podcast addict for the uh, things that aren't iPhones and go to iTunes uh, podcast iTunes, app, yeah. which is brand new. Yeah, I think they've got a new podcast app now. Um, but uh, yeah, if you could leave yeah, us a, iTunes is going down. Right. So. Yeah. If you could leave us a review or uh, something on uh, the podcast app, we'd appreciate it. That does something good for us too. Okay. I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm not drunk. I promise. <laughs> so, uh, on behalf of the fabulous Omni Bros and the fabulous InStockTrades.com, we say thank you for watching. Peace and love. Peace and love.